Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm going to do a part two because I took hours finding all the Winchester data. Part two, Winchester official ballistics data. Recap, real calibrated organic gelatin. Pig tissue is just like human muscle tissue. And I'll give you data in 28 real shootings. Winchester 147 grain Winchester weight box from San Diego PD compared to what it did in organic, the same average penetration depth. Old school 89 FBI numbers when they were figuring everything out. Um, please watch my other ballistic videos, including my 4x9 verse 45 series, my No BS Caliber series, where I do all the real data on HST's Gold Dot Critical Duty, including very important tissue crush. What is tissue crush? Volume of this cylinder, the bullet expansion, how deep it penetrates, but that's squared. It's simple math. One half diameter is radius. Radius squared, one half diameter squared times the penetration depth. Okay, times the height. So that's really, really what matters. Now, maybe a bit of energy matters in other people studying deer and PhD studies and all that, Courtney and Courtney. And maybe that first 5.9 inches or E15, 15 centimeters of damage where it drops a little bit over half its muzzle energy uh, really matters. Uh, but you want big expansion, you want penetration. Uh, spoiler alert, FBI said. 12 to 18 inches in all of their original eight turned in at six events and intermittent barriers. That's what mattered for law enforcement. Watch my video, FBI wrong, 12 to 18 inches. Civilians, 10 and a half to 12 inches is okay. And then watch my, um, my first uh, Winchester video where I thought I could only find this data. And boy, I spent the time and found all the official data from 2010 and other, uh, their chart and then other stuff on their website hidden. And then 2016 and how there was some weird changes in six loads in 2016 that are highly, highly questionable. Um, so quick recap of the screen there from the first video in case anyone here wants to pause and get the goodies. On to chart number two. I think I put the cheaper stuff, the Super X, the Rangers that are not the Ranger T's yet. The Rangers that are not Ranger T's or Ranger bonded. I don't know if those were the same, different coding, what the difference is. I don't know, but maybe Secret Service adopted one. And oh my God, didn't meet, meet the 12 inches of penetration. Now I'm saying it's perfectly good to get like 13 inches and a huge expanded HST. I'm not saying you don't want over 12. I'm just saying for most civilians that don't drive for a living, 10 and a half to 12 is probably okay. And the data backs it up, what these rounds did in real uh, shootings, real officer involved shootings, etc. and so forth. So there's that one. You can pause. I'm going to look at the old FBI charts here. Include uh, how the Winchester loads did officially, right? And I think that was through all eight tests. And then they since got rid of one of the windshields tests and the light clothing test because they realized light clothing doesn't matter. It doesn't change it from clear ballistics, clear, not clear ballistics, but uh, bare gel shots don't really matter. That's just a set. What matters is four layer clothing. There's a recap. Four layer clothing is what you want to look at. And here's some 2016 data. I know that's not as easy to see, but there's underlying six of them that changed. Three of them really, really highly questionable. Because when you change penetration number, usually the expansion number changes. It's a ratio. Uh, we'll get to that. Okay. So, anyway, guys, these may be boring. The other video didn't get a lot of views. But I'm just going to, like, show you some stuff, right? And let's start with... Uh, and if you see my dirty room in the background, don't, 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 don't hit. I'm just trying to get you the data like nobody else, nobody else does. Okay. Get my four and a half hour combative and street jujitsu instructional on BJJ Fanatics. And for black belts, fought MMA pro, trained with the best around the world. Uh, talk about grappling in the unknown environment where people can run up, go for your gun, pull their knife, etc. Uh, at the end, it's very important stuff. Don't just rely on a gun. Have awareness, have skills, be able to retain all of that. Uh, gun Sam just tested the 147 we're going to be talking about. Let's look at the FBI's. And I know this angle may not always be the best. I'm not sure quite where to put this. Let's look at the FBI data, guys. 
And so you see that they do everything everyone does. Uh, barrel length, velocity, muzzle energy, velocity, uh, velocity, muzzle energy, average penetration depth. I, I, they don't say it's average, but I think this is average for all eight events, five rounds per eight events. It's now five rounds per six events. We're testing protocols, uh, average expansion, I'm sure that is. And then tissue crush. They talked about tissue crush. They compared tissue crush. Volume of a cylinder. Adjusted volume of tissue crush. Volume of a cylinder. How much tissue is destroyed is going to be how much blood loss, diastolic pressure loss. Bad guy gets woozy, stops fighting you, and sits the F down. Hopefully he doesn't get back up. Hopefully you drop the BP enough. Bigger bullets, higher velocity bullets tend to do that more than smaller pew pew calibers or even 9mm. Get in the debates, get in the comments down below because you really don't know what you're talking about. Um, so uh, just let's look at highlight some of the rounds down here. 9mm Winchester Silver Tip, the infamous round 115, fired from a SIG 226, 4.25 inch barrel, 1091 velocity, 303. That's pretty. Puny muzzle energy. Boy, we need more velocity in 115. Average, I believe. I don't think this is four layer clothing. I think it's average in all events. 11.37 inches of penetration. 0.542 expansion. And even if you looked at heavy clothing or real OIS, if that was heavy clothing, those numbers seem kind of right for a pud loaded 115. They would get an organic, organic gel. Just over 11 inches, maybe less. Uh, probably, and uh, about 0.54 expansion. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, but boy, pretty low energy, only 2.67 tissue crush. What does that mean? Today's 124 plus PHST does 3.8. Today's 124 plus P gold that used by NYPD and everyone around America uh, does 4 cubic inches. And 147s can do more, but they have less energy, and there's a whole debate about that. If you really study things... Um, Etc. And so let's kind of take some other rounds. Um, hey, three Yeti 80 guys out there. But it went for nothing. My clear ballistics. Clear ballistics doesn't fucking matter, especially if it has no clothes on it. And it doesn't really matter anyway because it penetrates way farther than it would in real gel. Look at real gel. 6.84 inches of penetration. 6.84 inches of penetration. I'll back that up with another number uh, in a minute. Let's look at the 38 silver tip, 125, 8.47. It's not enough. We talked about that in the Platt FBI shooting, uh, Miami-Dade shootout. Winchester lead hollow point, 158. This is from 3-inch barreled M13s. And, uh, you know, 13.34, but no expansion. And I got that from Winchester's. 357 silver tip. Awesome. 13.76, 499 cubic inches tissue crush only at 82.5%. But I have other data on Winchester silver tips. Uh, that was the then accepted load. That was what you were allowed to carry optionally under 357 instead of 38. They hot loaded federal 147 plus P plus hydroshock. Why? Because the hydroshock bullet instead of the exposed lead did better against steel auto bodies and the very hard windshield test. Um, Winchester silver tip 185. That bad boy passed with 50%, 13.5 inch penetration, 0.619 expansion. And uh, let's look at that uh, 10 millimeter 180, 16.61 overall penetration, 0.526 expansion, 92.5% pass. So out of the 80 shots they took, 92.5% meet met the pre uh, penetration depth of 12 inches. That's all they were really going for back then because they were trying to go, oh my God, it was silver tip that failed, not our tactics. I mean, yeah, you don't really want a bullet that only penetrates eight, 8 inches, but a lot of bullets back then were putting bodies cold at only 10.5 to 12 inches of penetration. Uh, Secret Service selected one, I think, uh, even though it didn't meet the 12 inches. Okay, so let's go on. Sorry, this will be a long one. Let's go on to San Diego PD. In 1987, they adopted 9mm. They went with the 147 grain Winchester USA, which I think is the same as Winchester White Box. Let me know if you think differently in the comments down below. And then um, 28 bodies, torso shots without hitting bone. Yeah, that matters. And they compared that to organic gel. There's no mention of clothing back then. IWBA wasn't even putting clothing on. So it's not as good. But organic gel to human Real comparison, yeah, they are. Bubba doesn't know what he's talking about, and the keyboard warriors online. Well, that doesn't mean anything. I wasn't detected by a jello man. Uh, 
guess what? In 28, I'll show you. In 28, bad guys that didn't hit bone into the torso, there was an average penetration depth. That's penetration. Uh, at the end here, 16. Sorry. This one is going to be probably really bad to see in the lighting. Average penetration depth was 13 inches. Guess what the average penetration depth was in the organic gel? 13 inches. And everything we know today for 147, that sounds about right. Why? Because the heavier bullets retain more momentum. Okay, more energy maintained after slowing down a bit versus the higher velocity rounds. Um, I like 124 plus P. Fight me in the comments down below. Or some old school 115 plus P plus. Like maybe the Secret Service adapted before then switching to the 357 SIG for that shock and awe shutdowns. One shot stops that maybe actually did happen when you put one or two in the upper thoracic and they like drop uh, versus needing many to require blood loss. They kneel down and then get back up after BP shock. Um, but anyway, um, so there was a variable uh, on the low end, 10 inches, one of the shots, 10 and a half, one of the others, high end, 17 inches of penetration, 10 to 17, and the organic gel is more stable, 12 to 14 inches. But they go, okay, this organic, this is the real stuff. I just proved it to you. So no better and fight the people online that say, oh, it's not the same thing. Well, it's the same thing as the overall mixed, very different organs and tissue and muscle of a human compared to a bunch of pig flesh. Okay, that's calibrated properly and four layer is really what matters. Um, so I'm going to get these numbers Winchester, this is what their site looked back in 2011. They posted the 2010 catalog that may have only went out to law enforcement, I'm guessing. At the time, hey, 9 uh, 380 guys, again, heavy clothing, only 7.85 penetration. 7.85, less than 8 inches of penetration here in this T-Series 380, a fast one at 1,000 feet per second. And compared to the 38 plus P bonded, 11.3.617. That's a very good 38 load from, well, I don't know. That testing was probably from a 4V barrel. Uh, I believe it was instead of a snub. But it's still one of the better snub loads available even to this day with all this technological advancements. That would, you know, there's two other ones right there that I would recommend in that 125, 130 uh, plus P range, really, over even over the 135 plus P all law enforcement was using uh, for snub barrels. But anyway, um, you got all kinds of data in here. So let me go back to my charts. Let's start. Where should we start? Let's start with the cheaper stuff first. Because I think that then puts in a comparison when you were starting to get higher tech. And for Winchester, that was Ranger T and, you know, eventually Ranger Bonded. Um, but that's only more important if you're like law enforcement or dealing likely higher propensity to deal with auto bodies, with cars, bad guys and cars, having to shoot bad guys and cars or trying to run you over. Um, wild one today, we're trying to run over a bunch of cops on, uh, on YouTube. Anyway, um, okay. Winchester Ranger. Winchester, let's go to the USA first. So 115. Uh, I gave before in the other video, 115, 11.6 inches of penetration. We now know that 147 was really doing about 13 and 13 in bodies uh, on average. And that's all anywhere going to be from 3.0 to probably three and a half, three, four uh, tissue crush. So decent, still decent for a cheap round. Uh, is there better? Absolutely. But it doesn't totally suck. And I'll probably get the job as long as it doesn't have to go through a side little shot through arm, especially shoulder. Um, so look at all my videos to try and explain how this all works. Uh, one of the other videos I got cut off and I was, oh, well, I, I lost my train of thought about going through the body at different angles. I talked about in the FBI wrong video. You should probably watch that first. Uh, average to a heart without going through an arm first is 7.9 inches. Average male, I'm not average. I got a 46 inch chest, 250 pounds, still doubled slow and once, fall professionally MMA. Uh oh, the guys like that are out there, and there's 250 to 400 pounders out there that are deadly threats too. Um, but anyway, um, average only 7.9 inches, and it doesn't really change that much with body changes types. 7.9 inches uh, to the heart, and that's really what matters at different angles. Now, if it goes through an arm first, 
like in the Miami uh, Dade shooting, that went eight inches into his body. Guess what? It also went eight inches to organic gel testing to the old silver tips. Look at Paul Harold to see how much better the new ones do. Not the best, but not horrible for especially for like a low recoil short barrel option uh for new shooters um, new women uh ccw carriers etc so um let's go to super x because we talked about some 38 loads so let me talk about a couple 38 loads 38 125 plus p super jhp talking at the bottom here Twelve point three. This is four layer, and it's four layer denim. At least in twenty ten to twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen, they didn't say it. Did it change? We'll get to that later. It might have changed to four layer versus four layer denim. IWBA four layer denim. FBI has changed it. What the four layer clothing uh, was. Um, denim was harder. Uh, denim is usually less expansion, farther, deeper penetration. So know that. That might be important to know. Um, Twelve point three inches for the one twenty five. I'm sorry, for the 125.38, I was looking at the 357, 16.4 inches penetration, no expansion, no expansion, Ugh. and really low cubic inches of tissue crush, 1.67, oh my god, that's less than 9 millimeter balls, 1.78, so yeah, 38s aren't great unless you get expansion, 380s aren't great unless you get really mild expansion, because otherwise it's ball, and that's 1.78, Compared to four and a nine millimeter, that's good. Mm. Compared to eight or over or nine and a 45, that's good. Mm. Compared to six, six and a half with a lot of energy and a good 40. But you keep thinking that like 380 is okay. I used to carry LCP as a backup. If you really had to, yeah. But um, yeah, 38 or 38 or up or bust, okay? Um, know that. Know that. That little itty bitty hole. Think about how your pinky is about 355. Okay, think about that in the relationship to your body. Now it is squared, so when you take your thumb, a 45 pill, and put that through your body, this is a good analogy, I never thought of that, to the eyeball test from people in the yard, they can't tell the difference. Because 355 to 45 is a small difference, dummies. Or 0.53 expansion for a 9 millimeter, one and a half times, uh, versus 75, 80, and a 45. That's a little bit bigger, but they still might see in the eyeball. But that's through the entire path. It's through the entire path added up. That's squared, okay? So it's a lot more tissue crush damage. And you saw the FBI was doing that in 89. Pretty important stuff. Okay, so anyway, um, 158 plus P, Super X, lead hollow point, 19.6 inches penetration, no expansion through for layer denim. Only either 2 or 1.83, because FBI says cut it off at 18, even though they did pick originally a load that went just over 18. I, FBI says 12 to 18. They ideally say 14 to 16. Uh, bullet designers try to get to 15 now, um, but maybe you get to 13 with more expansion, which is probably actually better. Um, and FBI still gives more points, 16 to 18, versus the 12 to 14 range. So 14 to 16 gets 10 points, 16 to 18 gets 9 points, 12 to 14 inches gets 8 points, and that's the way it goes for penetration uh, point scale. Um, 357, 125 grain, 12.3 inches of penetration, 0.54 expansion, very similar to the federal numbers I have. Uh, for like from FBI testing, I have the data. It's not really in here, but I, I have other data to the federal load, um, which uh, Postal Service master people carried in their specially made GS33 Rugers with a three inch barrel, not two and three quarters, but a three inch barrel. I almost had one. I bought a manual very expensively. I have a manual for one. Um, very tight tolerances on those. But anyway, off track again as usual. So that's Super X. Okay, Ranger hollow points. 115, 10.1 inches of penetration, 0.70 expansion, 3.89. Huh, the 115 Ranger only did 10.1 inches of penetration. Probably good enough. I say 10.5 to 12 in my one video. Maybe I'll e-curl later, but I always said, like, is it as good as a, you know, HST Gold Dot or, you know, I guess a, in Winchester Land a Ranger T-Series? No, but 
Uh, but let's look at the 115 plus P plus Ranger. I'm guessing this is the load that Secret Service did their secret study. They didn't tell anyone about because they're secret, secret people. And 115 plus P plus Ranger non T series that went 10.7 inches of penetration, only 10.7 inches of penetration in four layer denim at 0.78 expansion, 5.18 cubic inches, 1335 feet per second, 455 muzzle energy, a lot of muzzle energy, a lot of tissue crush, a lot of expansion, and only 10.7 inches of penetration. Is everyone going to say Secret Service is wrong? That's not what was dropping. People the fastest in 9mm. Similar to 9BPLE. Look at my other videos. Mention a 9BPLE. Um, maybe they know something that these don't know. But anyway. Would, would it have a problem going through the shoulder bone? Yeah. If it's a side lateral shaft going through the shoulder. And a lot of times. Well not, in, in, in those bodies there are 28. One did go through the arm. And went 14 and a half inches. 147 Winchester weight box. And the real. SDPD study. Um, so, yeah, someone might be sh shooting and the bullet goes through the arm. That does happen in force-on-force -force training. It does happen real world. We've had Navy SEALs shot in their hands before and, yeah, pistol fights in a room uh, and stuff like that. So, I think that's enough of that. I have all the numbers. I've taken pictures. If I cared more, if I was getting more views, I would maybe give this to everybody in nice pictures. Uh, but there you go. Okay, so let's look at the 2010 numbers, that chart. I'll show you the chart. So this chart, look how good this is again. Let's go to the 9mm plus PT series, 13.2 inches. So we're looking at heavy clothing. 13.2 inches, 0.775 expansion. That's awesome expansion. When I give the tissue crush number, it's amazing. Uh, Masayub. His most is 9mm, his bread is loaded with 9 BPLE, but most his other 9mm are loaded with 9mm plus P plus T series, 127 grain, 14.4 penetration, 0.703 expansion, except it sucked, but going through windshields. And there's quite a few reports of heavy clothing and not expanding. Um, actually, Arizona Air Gunner, become friends with him, he's testing that in real organic gel, he calibrates. He's only using four-layer t-shirt. We're working on him. I'm trying to convince him to do two-layer denim, then two-layer t-shirt. So it kind of splits FBI, four-layer, and IWBA protocols. I hope he does it. We'll see. Maybe you guys should bug him because that would be way more how it actually looks in bodies. I talked about this in other videos. It looks like the heavy clothing. It penetrates and expands close to what heavy clothing test. That's why heavy clothing, real organic gelatin matters. Not clear ballistics other than Gun Sam's MDF, and I have a video on that you should also watch. Uh, that will probably air before this. Paul Harrell, Meat Target Matters, ASP, John, Active Self Protection, ASP, and Lucky Gunner are wrong. Lucky Gunner is wrong when he tells you, Oh, these pew pew little pew pew bullets, they are so much better because they penetrate so much farther in clear ballistics. Or, Wow, it, it meet 12 inches. <sighs> I just showed you the under 8 inches of the 380 loads. Organic gel is way more denser. How much more denser? Well, clear ballistics is only 75% as dense as organic gel. But the smaller diameter are going to penetrate farther at a, because of less drag than a bigger bullet. So it makes calibers totally skewed when you're comparing them with each other. Okay, hopefully that was another good way of saying that to get people to friggin' understand things a little bit. All right. So, anyway, here's the chart. I'll show it again, and maybe I can scroll down. Let's see, dude. I don't know if that, oh, that was to, to the right, to the right, to the left, to the left. Um, yeah, the 4165, the 4180 T-Series. Uh, kick butt the 230 T-Series. Only 11.9 inches of penetration. Oh, my God, it must be a failure. Must be a complete, get worth zero, 11.9 inches. Does law enforcement, yeah, law enforcement deals with cars. 14 and 15, 16 sounds good by me. Uh, but don't tell me when you're doing room entry with a team, if you got guys backing you up, 11.9 inches of, of penetration with a expanding to one inch over like 2.2 time diameter, original diameter or something. 1.01 inches of penetration into someone's lung, upper thoracic cavity. That's what matters. Boom! Hitting there. 
Okay, now going through the shoulder, can that be a problem? I did, did have a cop uh, online say that he saw 238 HST, which is the second biggest expander in 45, um, fail fail there. So it's a completely sideways shot through the shoulder. That's when things are really bad. If it just kind of skims through the bicep or, uh, you know, through without hitting the bone or only one of the bones of the form, you know, um, I'm sure that T-Series 45 is still pretty darn good, especially if you have guys on either side of you. You know what I'm saying? Hit at different angles. Um, you at least got a partner, something like that. Um, and 40 is awesome. And anyone that thinks differently doesn't know what the heck they're talking about. And one of the prices drop and all the guns are now actually engineered for it. So it's not the wear and tear and stupid barrel swap clocks. Gen 5's two and a half ounces heavier with a thicker slide to deal with it. VP 40, same way versus the VP nine. Oh my God. When you actually engineer pistols does, <laughs> for it, they do. Okay. Durability wise. Um, so, and then prices are going to keep dropping on 40. So there you go. Cause 155 is awesome when it's not in the swapped barrel pistols that beat them up, but in pistols actually engineered for it. 165s are awesome. Gives you everything, energy, boom, expansion, penetration, cubic inches, uh, peak pressure wave, peak retarding force stuff. You don't know what I'm talking about, but I've kind of given you enough in various videos, to start giving you a clue in on some stuff. Um, 180 expands huge, so that's fine too. Dealing with cars, dealing with animals in Alaska, 180 bonded bullets, what they're using their Glock 22s, last I checked. Uh, pretty much most of Alaska, and uh, that's just fine. Um, in 2016, they changed their brochure. Look at that T, that 380. Same data as before. Look at that 38 Special Plus P bonded. How much farther it went than the 380? Look at the 9mm. How much further that went than the 38 and the 380? It's almost like energy matters to do work. Um, a 9mm plus P plus T series. So, um, maybe we'll just go to that. So, in the changes made, I noticed in 2016, hopefully I gave the data you guys need. This is, this is still the 2010. I'm going to give this another screenshot. Can't line it up. Okay. So in 2016, I noticed that I think six loads and three especially have changed. That's really strange. No mention now anymore. They were proud of the four-layer denim. Like, we're doing, they called it heavy clothing, but there's mentions of we're doing the harder four-layer denim, which is true, but makes less expansion, more penetration, okay? It's always a ratio between the two. Uh, 2016, 147 bonded, still at 50 expansion, but now 14 inches of penetration. How do you not change expansion? Am I right on this one? How do you not change expansion and yet change penetration? 0.58 expansion, 0.58 expansion. Instead of 15.8 in 2010, first put out on the website in 2011, uh, versus 2016 testing, 15.8 down to 14. Hmm, I don't know. 124 plus P, 12 inches of penetration, 63 expansion, instead of 18.2 penetration, 0.56 expansion. 18.2 penetration to 12 even. That's a big friggin' change. Is it possibly, the mass net's not working out. Is it possible that they switched from 4 later denim to FBI uh, heavy clothing? Is it possible the tester didn't calibrate? Possible, possible they made up monies. I called the number they gave to law enforcement. It hangs up right away. It's really strange. It, it just it just kind of hang hangs answers and hangs up um, to talk to their uh, technical people. So um, anyway, then the other one with a thing 180 T series 12 inch penetration 76 expansion versus 134 and 64. So they got more expansion, less penetration. That could be lots of lot of variation of velocity. That one's a little more explainable. 230 gap, because we all talk about, actually, the gap was awesome. 
that was great. Why the gap die out? If it was in pistols other than blocks, <sighs> 45 gap was pretty damn cool. Okay. Oh, well. That's one of the ones that should have made it. Um, so 45 gap, 15 inches of penetration, 84 expansion. 45 gap, 2012.12 penetration, same 84 expansion. So how did it go in 2010, 84 expansion to 2016? Still exactly, all these exactly the same, some of the numbers, 24 expansion, but the penetration changed from 12.2 to 15. It's almost like stuff was made up or swapped or miswrote or something. Uh, 45, 230 bonded, 15 penetration, 84 expansion, versus 11, no, versus 12.2, same 0.84 expansion. So 12.2 now goes to 15 in 2016 suddenly. And the last one, 230 plus P2 series, went from 12.7.96 to 12.7.96. Okay, that's not a change. I don't know why I underlined that one. Hmm, I don't know. Okay, anyway. There's some questionable stuff in the 2016. This one's harder to see because I didn't use a marker. But there you go. But anyway, that's the official data. RT, other things. RT series, awesome. Do they expand huge? Yeah. Would I carry, especially the 165, 180 T series? Yeah. Um, I'm really curious um, what, what, what knowledge Moss Ayob was in combat. That's the video to make is Moss talking about the different bullets he was issued over the years, what he heard, autopsies he went to, um, legal battles he's been privy to that information, what it actually looks like from the autopsies, what the scuttlebutt was about OIS shootings, what was successful, what wasn't, what failed to expand, like I think the 127 plus P plus at times, um, but yet he still carries it. I think he still carries 230 Hydroshocks and his Glock 30S and 9B PLE and his Beretta. Old school rounds still get it done. Look at my FBI wrong video, my Paul Harrell and Gunsam video for more old school rounds can still get it done for civilians. I'm um, so actually was in combat. Masayob, can can you please do a video of that and other coppers back in the day? They have some pretty good firsthand talking to the guy that was involved, that's been to the autopsy or went to the hearing, for more firsthand knowledge and just kind of the general knowledge of the department, uh, what worked, what didn't. Guys, that would be awesome stuff to to have. Okay, um, I'm finding as much as I can. Uh, also, so before I lose this T-Series, they wanted to look good. They always measured from the little razor petals at the bottom, right? The bottom of the bullet where the razor -y, uh, jackets are, okay? Um, and at first, Dr. Martin Fackler thought these would be really awesome and really cool, and you want that as well because it might, like, cut a structure or aorta or a vein or something important, uh, like an organ, you know? Could it? I don't know. But later, uh, his protege, Dr. Gokar, um, goes, no, you got to measure everything at the frontal base of the expanded diameter of the bullet. That's your expanded diameter is the average of, you know, the big, widest side and the smallest because pedals, right? A ladder five or six pedal design. Now we see Winchester. Uh, look at my other video, the 124 plus P USA ready, only getting 10 and a half, 11 inches of penetration, but I'm sure it's still great for civilians because it's eight pedal. So there's more drag. Um, anyway, um, so maybe, you know, is the tissue crush I'm giving, is that right? Cause it's at the bottom and it makes some cool spirals though sometimes in the gel, you know, but he says, you know, the microseconds of temporary stretch cavity caused by pistol, not rifle. It, it rebounds in milliseconds, right? Um, so as it's expanding, though, from the tip, uh, from the main part of the expanded bullet diameter, it, the back is, is kind of going over the pressure wave. So it's not really probably cutting that tissue. Um, he's also said something before about the hydro shock uh, tip kind of starting the spreading of that before the main frontal face of the bullet hits. So keep that in mind, guys. Anyway, that was all the information I could get on, um, you know, Winchester official data, official four-layer organic data is where it's at, 
trying to get people to do proper four layer on YouTube and calibrate the organic gelatin. That's really hard. Uh, clear ballistics without closing absolutely doesn't matter. And yet people make fun of Paul Harrell's meat target. That's repeatable. Uh, as I said in the other video, I think I've always thought his meat target was a little too thin because some 380s might actually go to the back t-shirt, right? Usually the 380s are in real world, I think, are getting stopped by the back ribs. Um, uh, 115 critical defense. Look at his meat target and timers video. Very important. I talked about it went almost all of them, except one that lost his jacket, hit the back rib. The other ones from three different meat targets uh, were in the first, I think the t-shirt, maybe the first layer of fleece, like almost all decent hollow points, even cheap stuff that he tests, right? Um, but again, I think that's 11.25 for 11.5 on uh, critical defense. I've given the data before. I don't have it, but it's under 12 inches. Or anyway, so that 115 critical defense 9 millimeter round and that Paul Hall meat target and timers, that's a 115. It is under the 12 inch FBI minimum, but Hornady's well aware of this. They say 8 to 12. I want to go 8 to 10, but 10 to 12. And that's one of the ones that's like 11 ish something, right? Uh, so, know that. Would I, I wish it was just a little thicker, so only like the better rounds getting to 13 inches of penetration, like HSTs and even farther golden sabers and stuff. We would see that, but boy, it's pretty damn good and repeatable analog. Because Paul Harrell's a smart guy, and he's been through a lot, a lot, and law enforcement friends of his dad and military and his own DGUs, I'm sure he has a good idea of what bullets really do in real bodies and real shootings. And if you look at how he just kind of made up the 9 verse 40 sideways shot and how those bullets performed, wow. So I talked about that in the other video. Um, so anywhere, there's a little more take on Paul Harrell's meat targets, uh, Gun Sam's MDF testing, look at my video. It makes it clear ballistics matter because the penetration expansion is always a ratio. And if you put them together, you can find the volume of a cylinder. And when that is almost identical in every single official round from Winchester and Hornady and Vista Spear and Federal that I've done, Ken Sam's MDF is the only, his real world testing with four layer and MDF medium density fiberboard. It's the only clear ballistics that really matters on YouTube. Um, if you can't find good organic to back it up, and if you can't find all my data from the official LE sites, from Hornady, Vista, maybe check CVK or whatever, buying it out, we'll see if that goes through. Um, Federal and uh, Spear. Fortunately, we don't have Golden Saber data. I asked a very high up uh, head at Vista today if he can maybe start sneaking me a little more info or new testing how some things have changed over the years, like HST's kind of lures and now less, less expansion, more penetration than old lots. Uh, hopefully, I can get some of that on punch and deep and uh, stuff like that. But uh, I would like some on Golden Sabers. I'm still fine loading up a 124 plus P Golden Saber. Watch Paul Harrell's videos. I'm still fine loading up a 185. Golden Saber, or 180 Golden Saber, you're fine. Don't worry about it, okay? If you, you don't got to worry about your jacket separation, uh, unless you're a cop dealing with cars, okay? And even then, did it really matter when the center uh, said the jacket deep, and then boom, even if that happened in a windshield, the inner core still went straight line? I don't know. But there's Winchester and how it worked and how it worked in real bodies. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. If anyone made it to the end, said, I watched the whole thing. Give me a like and a subscribe. Kaboom.